You know, action movies are something I've appreciated since my days back in the sack. Movies like The Matrix, John Wick, The Terminator show us these insane superhumans surviving, fighting, and doing things no other humans could possibly do. Low key though. I could do that. And I could probably do it better than them. Today, ladies and gentlemen, same way we did for the horror movies, we'll be going over some action movies I can survive easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'll be giving you guys my strategy, my game plan, my thought process, and obviously, some of the ones that I can't. If there even are any. First up, I got The Terminator from the 1984 movie, The Terminator. This one's a little difficult, I won't lie. While this man may look human, he is not. Cause underneath all that fake hair, fake flesh, and fake blood is a, a lot of steroids. In a super killer robot from the year 2029, the T-800, made out of titanium, has super strength, extremely skilled with weapons, and above all else, ruthless as hell. Sparing innocence is not in this man's programming. He can see the most innocent thing on earth. He can see a, a damn newborn baby watching Coco Melon on his iPad. And if that's his target, Google Kaga. Now taking all this stuff into consideration, am I cooked? And this may surprise you, but absolutely i mean come on you guys this is the freaking terminator we're talking about played by arnold schwarzenegger he can let off one oh, get to the chopper and i am pissing myself i'm done finito honestly i think i stand a better chance against a more advanced model from terminator 2 because at least that dude i could freeze him out i'll take my car drive up to canada he's cooked but arnold yeah no i'm not doing it i'm sorry guys i'm sorry but i'll make it up to you i'll definitely beat the next one i mean it's only after being horribly injured during his time as a cop, Alex Murphy was transformed into RoboCop, a law-abiding, law-enforcing, cyborg police officer. He has bulletproof armor, deadly aim, and some serious identity issues. Get this man a therapist. Like, he don't know who he is or anything about his past life. It, it gets really deep. Point is, though, he's a robot cop. RoboCop. Now, immediately first solution I can think of is don't break any laws. Easy enough, right? Wrong. You see, we gotta assess what kind of cop RoboCop is. Is he a let me off the hook with a warning kind of cop? Or is he the type to see a more melanated fellow and just... The sign says no loitering. Since he's from Detroit, I'ma assume the latter. Now that we got that down, let's just say I do commit a crime. Now RoboCop is on my ass. What do I do? Well, ladies and gentlemen, remember those self-identity issues I mentioned earlier? Well, that's our opportunity right there. Imagine this. Let's say they call me shoplifting at the local Target. Boom, police gets a word of it, RoboCop is on his way. RoboCop approaches my aisle with about three to five of his police buddies, and he tells me to freeze. I'm under arrest. I smile internally knowing what I'm about to do. Good afternoon, officer. Sir, what seems to be the problem? He's got a weapon! Alright, next one for sure. Unlike the other movies so far, I'm facing more than one opponent. A whole planet of them, actually. These are highly advanced creatures with sophisticated communication, access to weapons, the ability to adapt to almost anything, and that's already on top of their natural capabilities. Do y'all know how strong a monkey is? So how am I winning this one? It's a literal 1v gazillion. There's no way I make it out, right? Well, there is a simple solution to this one. It may be all advanced and have all these weapons, but at the end of the day, they're just monkeys. It's as easy as setting up a huge pile of bananas and sitting back and relaxing. Especially if I put less bananas than they actually need. Oh boy, it's too easy. Their instincts wouldn't be able to resist. It'll be like a moth to a flame. But honestly, if that doesn't work, I'll just join them. I'll blend right in. My white friends tell me all the time I kind of look like a monkey. I think it might be because of my facial hair. Anyways, I'll fit right in. I'll be fine. Planet of the Apes, too easy. What do y'all expect me to do? Are we living in a dream? Are we living in a dream? Life's a simulation run by machines, humans are enslaved, and a bunch of agents will come after you if you find out the truth. What am I gonna do? You see, the thing about this one is even if I did want to find out the truth, I can't. Opioids ain't really my thing, you know? I don't think I really fit the demographic anyways. I I'm more of a blue crystal kind of guy if you catch my drift. And since I won't be taking either of the pills, I'm pretty much winning. Granted, I'll still be a bot plugged into the matrix, but that means Agent Smith won't come after me. I'll be too busy waking up every day at 6 a.m to work a job I don't want to work, paying rent I nearly can't pay, and ultimately after 65 years of working 40 hour weeks, I'll finally get to retire and enjoy my last few years in my nice one bedroom apartment in Detroit, Michigan. Is it too late to take the red pill? 
So for those who don't know, the Hunger Games is a competition designed by these weird hair having people where kids from different districts have to fight each other to the death in an unfamiliar location. In this case, the woods. And last person or last people, forgot to mention, you get a partner, standing when it big for their district. Now, this is one that I had to think long and hard about because there's so many different possibilities. Firstly, one might think, yo, you can just escape or go out of bounds during the games. That way they can't catch you. No, these dudes, the game creators, have freaking fireballs they can launch on. They can pretty much control the whole map like they're playing Minecraft creative. So going out of bounds is off the table. How about hiding? You see that one? That one is just too easy. You see, I'm a hide and seek champion. I was so good, people would give up on finding me and just go home and not tell me for hours. I like me a bit of a challenge. I like the chase. So I've concocted a plan that trumps both of these. Listen up. Being that I played thousands of matches of Minecraft Hunger Games and won a good portion of them, 17 to be specific, I learned a lot of things. First thing we got to think about is weapon slash skill of choice. Normally I would go for a Glock, but I think that might not be allowed. So I'll pull a Katniss and stick to the bow and arrow as I do have a pretty strong right arm. Secondly, who will be my partner? Could it be PETA, the camouflage professional? Katniss, the marksman we can run a bow meta? Kato, the relentless killer or rue and the answer to this one might surprise you but i'm picking no one i'm doing this thing solo dolo single pringle popular loner style while partners may be advantageous in some cases i'm avoiding them completely i'm dtb don't trust I don't know, bystanders? I'm avoiding getting betrayed, and I'm avoiding heartbreak when my partner dies. Win-win. No one played Minecraft with me back then, then no one's winning with me now. I'm sorry. Now we gotta talk strategy for when the game starts. Immediately, I'm going straight for my boat. Most likely, I'll be the fastest one there. I mean, I ran track for a month freshman year, and they kicked me off the team because I was... <laughs> too fast so i'm definitely getting my bow and as soon as i do get it i'm targeting everyone i see but preferably people who are easy targets old ladies fat people children I i'm sorry it's you or me my boy i'd say right there i'd take out about anywhere from 5 to 15 people but I'll be on the calm side and I'll say five. Boom, 19 people left. After running out the middle, I would wait till nightfall, go on the prowl again, collecting resources, staying low key, staying hidden when, shh, I see Kato and his goons. I could easily take out all of them, but I don't really feel like it right now. Instead, I decide to crumble a few of those nightlock berries into their water. Bam, morning comes, half of Kato's group is gone. It's too easy. Now, fast forward to the final four. Me, Katniss, Peta, and Kato. Again, could take out all of them with a single arrow, but that's too easy. Instead, I have a better plan. I'll help Katniss and Peta take out Kato. And in doing so, now it's just us three. Me versus the District 12 people. The announcer says, Only one team can win! Katniss and Peta look at me knowing what they have to do. And then, showtime. I don't wanna die, man! <laughs> I want to live. Please, my mama, man. My mama need me. My, my kids need me. My district need me, man. Please, man. There got to be another way, man. <laughs> Katniss instead proposes another option, the poisonous nightlock berries. She wants all of us to eat them together to send the game creators a message. Three, two, one. Wait, so are we eating them on go or on one? I did it. I won! It's that easy, my people. And if that plan doesn't work, I always have a contingency plan. I could just call up my boy Moist Critical. And as y'all know, he's been in the movies. He could easily pull some strings from me, allowing me to win. And I mean, I would call him right now, but he might be busy. That was pretty much all the movies I wanted to go over today. And as you guys can see, as long as I'm not going against an android, a cyborg, or a radioactive lizard, I'm pretty much immortal. Comment down below which movies you guys think you would have survived. And any more movies you want me to talk about, I might do a part two. And moral of the story, Yo, Moise, say what's up to the video.